So you finished the TV show and you're asking either for yourself or on the behalf of a friend, what Fallout game should I start with now that I've finished the show? Well, in this video, along with the help of my subscribers, I'm going to break down the pros and cons of each of the Fallout games. I'm going to be rating them by five metrics, giving myself a total of 50 points to distribute per game, and then my subscribers will get to have their vote at the end of this video. I won't be rating the first two games for reasons I'll explain later in the video. The categories I'll be rating by are story, the game's story, open world and settings, the quality and character of the game's open world, RPG elements, the RPG elements of the game and how well they play off, combat, how fun is the game's combat? And finally, technical specs. Does the game technically run well on modern systems for someone playing nowadays? Something worth saying about technical specifications for those who may not know Bethesda's creation engine. It's worth telling you that these games can be very buggy and or difficult to get running. And for this spec, I'll be treating the games as unmodded. So this video will apply equally to console players or just those who don't feel like downloading community mods. First up, we have Fallout 3. The story of Fallout 3 is by far the most similar to that of the TV show, at least in my opinion, in that you'll be chasing your father throughout the wasteland, finding side quests and meeting people along the way. The game also has one of the most comprehensive introduction sections, and it really sets the tone. However, unlike the TV show, which takes a more comical tone you'll see later in Fallout games, Fallout 3 is by far the most grim dark in terms of feeling of the 3D Fallout games, and can even be downright creepy and somber at times. Overall, it's a solid narrative that sticks to the Fallout formula. You can't go wrong here, it's an 8 out of 10. The game's open world, however, is at least, in my opinion, inferior to the two games that would follow, as Bethesda further honed their skills. H. Bomber Guy, in his heavily critical review of Fallout 3, went into this issue in some detail, but I'll keep it short. The world of Fallout 3 is oddly shaped, a lot of it is barren, and wandering through it can often result in being more lost and frustrated rather than finding interesting things happening around each corner. However, as I've said before, if you do like a grim, dark feeling, that desolate world will definitely hit for you, but I can see it putting off some new players. A 6 out of 10 for me. RPG Gameplay Fallout 3 is without a doubt the most RPG-like of the 3D Fallout games. Its quest design is more complex, with many quests requiring you to talk to multiple NPCs to figure out solutions. Simply following a quest marker is not always available, and you could spend hundreds of hours exploring all the branching paths in the game, and many a person has. This is very much an RPG and not a first-person shooter. This is a game for people who love RPGs and RPG systems. A definite 9 out of 10 when it comes to the quality of its RPG systems. The downside of this is that the combat is terrible, to the extent that my partner, when watching me record this video, asked what is that when watching me engage in melee combat, and asked if the game was just broken. Overall, the game's combat is only a 4 out of 10. And the game does not do well on the technical front either. Many of the releases of the game were plagued with issues from the now defunct Windows Live service, and even with recent patches intending to fix these multiple issues. Even as someone experienced with modding, I struggled to get the game running properly on several different PCs and different versions of the game. This is probably the most persistently buggy game Bethesda has ever made, which is saying a lot, and it definitely will at some point frustrate you if you play it long enough. A 3 out of 10 from me. Next up, we have the critically acclaimed, but also somewhat a uh, middle child black sheep of the family, Obsidian Studios' New Vegas. When it comes to the story, I'm incredibly biased towards Fallout New Vegas. Unlike 3 and 4, New Vegas tells a much more faction-based narrative of different groups within the wasteland fighting over control of the Vegas Strip and surrounding important locations. I've played through the game several times, and each time I find something new. I love the Italian Mafia spaghetti western vibe, and while the story is less traditional than the other Fallout games, the political intrigue and sense of looming war really do it for me. An 8 out of 10 from me. The map of Fallout New Vegas is in my mind the best in the series. I won't spoil too much for the new player, but let's just say the way the map is crafted means that just wandering throughout the Mojave easily guides the player through different narratives. The game has multiple wonderful cues to guide the player towards areas of importance, with the glowing lights of the Las Vegas Strip luring you ever forward when you begin the game. I think it's the best designed open world in a video game ever. A 9 out of 10 for me, maybe even a 10. As an RPG, Fallout New Vegas keeps the same RPG elements generally in terms of Fallout 3, with some changes here and there. In terms of questing, however, Fallout New Vegas can be a bit more straightforward. 
You often take missions from major factions that are clearly indicated and then proceed towards a quest marker. There's not always as much need for exploration and discussion with NPCs to find a solution, and getting lost is more difficult. It's still very much an RPG, but I can feel why some people think its RPG elements aren't quite as amazing as 3. Combat Fallout New Vegas for me improves upon the combat, though the community often debate about why this is, and I'm a little worried about what people might say in the comments section, frankly. It just feels to me like aiming is smoother and there is better hit feedback on weapons. Enemies also feel much less like bullet sponges. It's the same combat as number three, but it feels like it's been tweaked a bit, the guns feel better, and overall the combat is just more fast paced and more fun. A five out of 10 from me. Technical. Like its predecessor, New Vegas has a host of technical issues. The major one for me being save corruption. Nonetheless, it's easier to get running on modern systems than Fallout 3 due to the lack of Windows Live residual bugs and also issues with graphics drivers on Intel and even some AMD systems. Overall, a 5 out of 10. And so we come to the most modern entry to the Fallout series, Fallout 4. But before we go on, I wanted to say thank you to everyone in the Fallout community for their response to these videos and all your kind comments and subscriptions. It's been really great to just make videos and have people watch them and know that you enjoyed them. At the end of this video, we're going to see what my subscribers think about what I've had to say in this video. And if you want to get involved with that, well, click the subscribe button because I'm definitely going to be doing more videos like this one where my subscribers views get counted alongside my own because I quite enjoy that. Anyways, let's move on to Fallout 4. But before we do, an honorable mention to the original two Fallout games that started the series. I would say you should play these under two conditions. You're an older gamer that's used to traditional CRPGs and the Fallout show has inspired you to be interested in the series again. Well, go and play the Fallout games, one and two. Or you might under the other condition that you were particularly recently captivated by Baldur's Gate 3 and you are now willing to do a deep dive into the more traditional CRPGs in that genre. If you want a combination of Baldur's Gate 3 in the Fallout universe, go play Fallout 1 and 2. But like I said, these 3D games are probably going to be a good place to start for 90%, maybe even more of the people watching this video. Anyways, finally on to Fallout 4. Fallout 4's story is a bit difficult to summarize without huge spoilers. It combines the faction aspect from New Vegas with the chase someone you know through the wasteland element of Fallout 3, essentially combining the narrative aspects of both games as you, the frozen protagonist, emerge out into a new world you don't understand. The fact Fallout 4 is a mix of both New Vegas and 3 in many aspects left fans of both games feeling a little frustrated at times, but I think in hindsight, the game's story is still a 7 out of 10. Fallout 4's open world, while not as amazingly designed as New Vegas, at least in my opinion, definitely leaned heavily on the team's experience making Skyrim. The best way I can think to put it is that if Fallout 3 is a legitimate wasteland experience, Fallout New Vegas is a sort of narrative journey. On the other hand then, Fallout 4 is a bit of a theme park with activities for you to explore. I would rate this even higher personally, but I think objectively, the open world is a 7 out of 10. RPG elements. So here's where things get controversial, and I know there's someone watching this video waiting for me to get to this part. Fallout 4 ditched a lot of the RPG systems from the other games. Instead, the player puts points into stats that allow you to then unlock various perks. The system I still find enjoyable, but it is definitely massively simplified from the previous entries. Moreover, in terms of quest design, Fallout 4 is by far the simplest. While I love some of the writing and design ideas behind the quests, and the voice acting is often fantastic, the reality is that 90% of the time it involves walking towards a quest marker and then walking somewhere else. The worst thing, though, was the introduction of the dialogue wheel, which really removed a lot of the complex dialogue choices from previous entries, at least in this man's opinion. A definite 5 out of 10 from me. But a lot of the RPG depth has been lost in favor of combat. I'll come right out now and say it. If you are a person who predominantly plays first-person shooters and is looking to get into the Fallout games, this is the one to start with. It is the only game with shooting mechanics good enough to please those interested in a gun-focused experience. Firing some of the game's bigger weapons and watching the physics effects and blood splatter is quite literally a blast. Oh my God. No, God! <clears throat> 
it's, it's an 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. Finally, the technical side. Fallout 4 was certainly buggy on launch. With its many updates and next-gen upgrades, however, it runs pretty well on most modern systems, besides some issues with multiple monitors, resolutions, and still some save corruption. I've never had any huge issues though playing this game unmodded in its current state on a modern system. A 7 out of 10 from me. So now to draw this video to a close and reveal the results of the subscriber vote in my community section. Coming in at a distant last place to disappoint Old Man Banjo is Fallout New Vegas with 42 votes. Coming in a close second with 60 votes is Fallout 4. And coming in first place, contrary to everything I've said so far in this video, is Fallout 3 with 69 votes because my subscribers are apparently collectively ironic. Why are you the way that you are? But in the interests of data accuracy, let's now weigh my subscribers' votes equally with my own and see what we get. What we in fact get is, despite me much favoring Fallout New Vegas and my subscribers much favoring Fallout 3, it actually turns out that between us, the mutual agreement is that all the Fallout games are pretty darn good and whichever one you choose is a great idea, which really at the end of the day is probably where we should be at. With 51 score, it's Fallout 4, which is probably a good place to start. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you like and subscribe for more because we're definitely going to be doing more and I'll see you guys around. Peace.